Hello guys and welcome back to another tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make some really cool rigid body simulations in Blender. We're going to make this really simple chain with these balls and then stack some cubes and just kind of smash it. So I really hope you guys enjoy it. I will say we are making this at quite a large scale. For example, each one of these cubes here is one meter by one meter. But I found if you made things any smaller, the chain physics just breaks apart for some reason. So I apologize for that. I understand that the scaling here is way big, but I still think this is a fun result. I'll be uploading my original result, this one here, to the Patreon. But today I'm going to take you step by step for how to make this. The only thing I'm going to kind of rush through is the materials, but the main thing here is learning how to set up the scene and make this really cool um, rigid body simulation. So let's jump into it, and I really hope you guys enjoy. Okay, so first of all, we're going to start by selecting everything, and we're going to go and press delete. So we now have a clean, empty scene to work with. We're going to go Shift A, we're going to go to our mesh options, and let's add in a torus. We're going to go into our front orthographic view by pressing one on our number pad. We're going to tab into edit mode, and with all of this active, we're going to go R, X, 9, 0, and we're going to press enter. And then we're going to go into our X-ray mode here, we're going to select the top half of our torus and we're going to go E to extrude and then Z and we're just going to extrude it along the Z axis about this much. Then we're going to press A to select everything and we're going to go G, Z and just move it till it's kind of in the, the origin point or this cursor here is in the middle like so. Okay, that's very important that we have that in the middle. We're going to tab back out, we're going to disengage the X-ray mode and we're going to right click and go Shade Smooth. Now we have a link in the chain. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go S just to scale it down a bit and then go A or Control A, and this is really important, we're gonna apply the scale. Now if you were to actually look at this, if we went Shift A and just quickly added in a cube, this cube here is actually, um, if you go to items, one meter by one meter. So this chain link is absolutely massive. But the thing is, I've tried this out and for some reason, if you scale this way down and you apply the scaling and you adjust the settings and the physics, for some reason, Blender just cannot work um, past a certain scale. For some reason, I don't know why, things just explode apart. So for that reason, we're gonna have to work like this. But I'll, we'll, we'll work around some of the issues. But let's just, for now, select this cube, just delete it. And we're gonna grab this chain and we're gonna go Shift D to duplicate and then Z. Move it up to here. Just so before it touches the top here, we're gonna go R, Z, 9, 0, and hit enter. So now we have this. We don't want them touching, but we want them close. We're now gonna select both of them, and we're gonna go Shift, D, and then Z, and we're gonna move it up till it's just under here, but not touching. And because that's all one action, we can go Shift, R, and just repeat. And we're gonna repeat about this many times. Okay, that should be enough. We don't wanna to go too crazy. And then we're going to grab the bottom chain link. We're going to tab into edit mode. And we're going to go shift A. And we're going to add in a UV sphere in edit mode. And we're going to go G, Z. And we're going to move it down like so. And then we're going to go S. Maybe scale it up a bit and then bring it down. Now we have this. We're going to tab back out. Right click and go shade smooth. Now we have a ball on the end here. In fact, let's just tab into edit mode quickly. And just make it even a little bit bigger. Like that. Okay, that's about right. We're now going to actually add the physics. Let's with this ball active here. Let's go over to our physics and let's give it a rigid body. We wanna leave it as active, but we wanna come here and change the shape to mesh. Um, if we leave it as convex hull, that can work for something that is like a cube or something. But where we have something that's linked in something like a chain here, the convex hull will just explode apart. So we're gonna change it to mesh, so it's mesh on mesh interaction. And then to not have to add all of this to every link, we're just gonna press A to select everything. And you can see that this first one that we added it to is still the main active element. We're gonna press F3, and we're gonna go copy, space, and we're gonna go copy here. You can see copy from active. Now each one of these other ones have that same modifier, the physics bridger body modifier here, and it also has all of these ve the, the, um, presets like the mesh here, which is exactly like we want. If you click on them, they're all exactly the same. But we're gonna select the top one here, and we're gonna come here, we're gonna make that one, the very top one, we're gonna make that passive. Because obviously we don't want that one to fall. So now if we go to frame one and we hit the space bar, you're gonna see we have a physics simulation. And how cool is that? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into a front orthographic view, make sure you're in frame one and then press A to select everything. And then we're gonna go R and we're gonna rotate about this much and we're gonna go G and we're gonna move it up to about here. 
maybe even a little bit higher. And then we're gonna hit spacebar and let's see it simulate. Okay, there we have our simulation. Um, it's a little bit bouncy, but let's just rotate it even a little bit more, like so. And now let's just watch it swing. Okay, that's really good. Maybe bring it down just a little bit. Go to frame one, hit the space bar. Okay, that's looking really good. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna grab this guy and go Shift D to duplicate it, and then go R to rotate it like so. And then let's go to our right orthographic view. Let's move this one over here a little bit. Grab this one and move this one over here a little bit. So now they're kind of opposite. And now if we hit the space bar, we can see this happens, which is really cool. All we're gonna do now is we're gonna go Shift A, we're gonna add in a cube. Let's go into our front view and let's go G, Z and move it up, holding in control to it snaps to the floor, like so. Tab into edit mode and then go Control B and bevel it and just roll in a segment with the middle mouse button like so, and then tab back out, right click and go shade smooth. And let's go to our rigid body, give this a rigid body and let's leave it as active but make it convex hull, which will work in this case. We're gonna go into our front orthographic view, we're gonna go shift D and then we're gonna go Z and hold in control and just take one till it snaps to the top here. And then we're gonna go shift R and let's make it about five high, one, two, three, four, five. And then let's grab these two, the stack like so, let's go to the right view. Let's go Shift D Y and hold in control till it snaps. And then go Shift R to repeat it. And let's grab the stack again, Shift D Y and then hold in control this way till it snaps to the side. And then go Shift R twice just to repeat it here. So now we have a wall like this. You could add as many as you want. But if we were to hit the space bar now, it's just gonna fall. So we need to go Shift A, add in a plane and scale it way up. And then go Control A and make sure to apply that scale. Tab into edit mode and then select this um, edge over here. So if you go to your front view, it should be this edge at the back. We're gonna go E to extrude and Z to bring it up. Select this edge and go Control B to bevel, roll your middle mouse button. Now we have a floor, maybe scale it on the X a bit and then go Control A again, apply the scale. Right click and go shade smooth. And now we're gonna to go to our rigid bodies, give that a rigid body under our physics. Let's make this passive, and this time we're gonna make it mesh, like so. And now let's make sure to save. I'm gonna save it on my desktop. I'm just gonna call it Wrecking Ball, and I'm gonna go Save Blender File. And now let's go to our front view, go to frame one, and let's see what this looks like. And there you can see, it doesn't have quite enough mass. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna select these balls down here. And let's just make the balls at least under the mass. Let's just make them 10 kilograms each. Let's grab this one here. Let's make that 10 kilograms under the mass. Let's go to frame one, hit the space bar. And now that should be a lot more effective. Okay, now the scaling here is actually, you can see it looks like it's going really slow. That's just because in real life, this is absolutely massive. So the physics here is correct. What we can do, we can go to our rigid body settings here under our scene properties. And let's go over here to the rigid body world. And let's take the speed and bump it up to two. Let's go to frame one, hit the space bar. And you can see over there, that's Brexit a little bit. So let's go to frame one. And one thing we can do is we can just select these two chains at the top. Tab into edit mode and with both of them active, we're gonna go Alt S and just thicken them a little bit. Tab back out. Go to frame one, hit the space bar and let's see. Okay, so that's giving us a little bit of a problem here. So let's make the speed 1.5. Let's see if that helps. And let's see. Okay, that, that's better. So now we have our physics simulation and this is pretty satisfying. So let's now go to our front view, hold in uh, or go shift A and let's just go add in a camera. Let's scale the camera up, G, Z, move it up and then G, Y, move it back. Go into your camera view and then zoom back. And at this point you can choose whatever camera angle you want. So this is completely up to you. I'm not gonna tell you how to do it. You can get whatever you think looks visually pleasing. And then what you can do is you can go change your renderer to cycles. If you have a GPU, I'd recommend you use it. And let's make the sample amount under the render 50. And let's go Z and let's go rendered. And if you go control B and drag over your camera, you can limit the render to your camera. 
And now we can go to our world settings. Let's go to the color. Let's add in a sky texture and let's make the strength 0.5. And then let's rotate the sun till our lighting kind of suits us. So I'm going to go with something like that. And at this point, you can grab these and you can give them whatever colors or materials you want. So maybe with these cubes, I'm going to select them all and just give them all that same material by linking them. And you can grab all of these chains and the balls and you can give them all the same material. So maybe go with a bit of a metallic kind of material, make it sort of darker. Um, this is not really a, a material tutorial, but um, you guys kind of get the idea here. You could add whatever materials you want for my background. For that one, I just um, added a principal shader and I gave it a checker texture. And uh, I just also fed that in to a texture coordinate and set it as object. And with a mapping node, I made things really small, like 0.2. I know I'm going really fast here, but like I said, this is not really so much about the um, materials here. I'm just doing a quick overview of what this could look like. But you guys get the idea here. And uh, then what you can do is you can go to your render settings. You can also enable something like motion blur. And that's about it. Um, you can definitely do something much more fancy with the materials but you can then go to your output properties, choose a folder somewhere in the computer. Then you can change your file format to a FFmpeg video. Under the encoder, I prefer to make it MP4. Make sure to save, and then you can just go render and render this out as animation. But one more thing I should just quickly mention, to render this, you have to cache this in. So just make sure, first of all, you go to your scene properties, and then under your rigid body world, make sure to come here to your cache Make sure that the start and end value agree with your timeline here. And then just go bake and bake this into your scene. And then you can come in here and you can actually render it out. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. I will be uploading my original um, Patreon file to my Patreon. So you can check that all out in the description below. And I'll see you guys next time for another tutorial.